I've got a new uh, nickname for you, by the way, in the Friday introductions that's going Uh-oh. to stick. Yeah. I, I, Am I, I going to hate it? No, you'll love it. I, I okay. learned it yesterday while watching uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, a rerun <laughs> from season eight. All right. and, uh, and by the way, Richard Lewis, who was a, a mainstay of that show as well, passed away yesterday. He was one of my favorite comedians. Uh, heart attack, I think they said it was. But uh, He hasn't tremendous. looked healthy in a long time, though. No, he he was recovering alcoholic and, and addiction. Uh, he he went through it, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, he came out the other end and uh, was uh, one of the great comedians out there. Just a really funny guy. Uh, Richard Lewis passed away yesterday. Also, New York. Uh, I'm sorry, the Jefferson County Press he was put him in charge of New York's prosecuting attorney. <laughs> Jefferson County prosecuting attorney Matt Harvey is here as well. Matthew, good morning. And on the telephone, it is uh, John Doyle, former delegate, currently a candidate for the state senate and also in the state capitol doing some lobbying as well. John, good morning to you. Good morning to all of you. Matt, John, and Rob. Good morning, sir. So wonderful to have you with us, Mr. Doyle. It is wonderful to be with you. Okay, let's get to it, sir. Uh, you, were, <laughs> you, you, were, you were sent there on behalf of three organizations to lobby and uh, try to change some minds or at least alter some uh, in, in some form or fashion. As we get down to the final uh, week and a half, two weeks of this legislative session here, John, I guess it's really just about a week or so. Uh, how are you doing, and, and what are you seeing? Uh, I'm doing really well. Last night was crossover day, uh, so the the House went in at 8 a.m., uh, finished up around 6. The Senate didn't go in until 11. They finished up about 7.30. Uh, but uh, crossover day being the last day a bill can emerge from its originating house. And so beginning today, the Senate can only take up bills that were, have been passed by the House, and the House can only take up bills that have been passed by the Senate. So uh, it it, uh, it reduces the number of bills that a lobbyist has to worry about. That's, uh, that's for sure. But uh, the, it's replaced by the intensity uh, behind the battles uh, on, on the remaining bills. What are some of the ones that are being considered that you now will put your focus on? Well, uh, the Senate yesterday passed a couple of bills relating to carbon offset programs. And, and I think they're, uh, it's, it's, uh, 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 I think these are not very good ideas, these bills. Uh, one of them, uh, and I, I'll give you the bill number, but I won't refer to it again. I don't like to refer to bill numbers. It's Senate Bill 618 would say that right now the the system is the free market if you if you ha- say have a few hundred acres in uh somewhere in west virginia that's got a lot of trees on it and some natural gas company is looking for what's called a carbon offset uh uh and so it could qualify for federal tax credits it says hey you know can we pay you to use uh, all the all the uh, 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 the uh, pollution that your trees are keeping from the air, can we use that and count toward us, and we'll pay you for it? And it's right now the system is the free market. Well, this bill is going to set up a state-run agency and mandate everybody in West Virginia has to uh, trade their carbon offsets uh, through uh, that state agency, and I just think that's asinine. Uh, and, and this comes from, uh, Republicans who, who like to talk about the free enterprise system and, and, and the beauty of the market. Uh, but, uh, the, the market's actually working fairly well right now. And so that's one. Well, John, they, one, John, before you move uh, on, yeah. we'd, like, we'd like to address this bill first. So if, if there wasn't a problem, then why did this problem that what didn't exist need solved? Um, Rob? I served 26 years in the legislature. People are constantly looking for solutions to problems that don't exist. <laughs> well, what's what's the rationale for the bill that by the proponents? I I can't figure it out. I really can't. Uh, I think it's the agency that's promoting it. The uh, the uh, Division of Natural Resources. And the only thing I can think of is that, 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 that they think that there's there's a wild west out there that they need to be the sheriff of. So at, at, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. So this will this put it under the PSC or or create a whole new? No, agency? no, the Division of Natural Resources. Okay. 
And could yeah. they stop them? Could yeah. they say no to if well, I, if I yeah, had a hundred? If I could get to this other bill, which is it's very similar, and then we can talk about sure. both yes, of sir. them. Yeah, eight, uh, Senate Bill eight twenty two would set a twenty year cap on any current agreement, uh, and and after that, and after that, then they would have to uh, uh, re- renew an agreement that would be under state regulation. Yeah, it's a the, like, the two really go together, and so so would that also impact solar projects with the twenty year cap? Uh, no, no. This has to do with what is called carbon offset legislation. Okay. Natural gas companies like, say, EQT, which is building that uh, um, uh, the Mountain Valley Pipeline. It's one of the companies building the Mountain Valley Pipeline. Well, because they're building that pipeline, uh, they are uh, uh, putting some pollution into the air. And under federal law, they need to offset it. And they go looking for people, for, you know, farmers or, or individuals or even companies that have land with lots of trees on it and say, we'll pay you so that uh, your trees can count as our offset. Uh, and and uh, now I, I, I think I, I also think that, that the, the Division of Natural Resources think that they can get some money from this. You know, oh, from permit fees fee. and that sort of thing to fund their programs. Well, the twenty-year cap on contracts—that is that only applicable to these carbon offset contracts? Uh, I think. Okay. Okay. That was... I just got involved in this about three days ago, and I'm—I've been—I've read both of these bills three, four times each, and I'm—I I still can't figure out exactly where they're coming from, but. Uh, uh, and, and, and it's a, it has to do with with the rules. For example, if you have if you have sold your uh, offset agreement, if you if, if you've gotten some money from EQT, and I'm just using them because I can think that's a gas company I can think of. Uh, if you've gotten some money from EQT, uh, they they pay you usually it's a lump sum, and maybe a few years later you want to cut your trees down and, and do some timbering. Uh, I think maybe the divi- it, it, it's the Division of Forestry. Now, I, uh, I'm sorry, not the Division of Natural Resources. I think maybe the Division of Forestry sees this as as a way to keep people from, you know, getting money from the con- from from the carbon agreements and then cutting trees, uh, or or that they get uh, that that that. that uh, um, they can regulate the cutting of trees so that anytime somebody enters into a contract to have their trees cut, it re- refers to being programs being in a managed timberland program. So it's actually pretty complicated. So if everybody sells their rights to the the, the carbon swap, then that would that have a really bad impact on the logging industry. Well, th- that's possible. But, and maybe that's uh, what these bills seek to remedy. Well, that yes, I think they want to stimulate more of wood products production in the state, and and part of it, it is interesting. Uh, they're using the uh, collapse of Allegheny wood products earlier in the week, uh, or actually this past weekend, uh, as an example of why stuff like this is necessary. That was a particular situation, had nothing to do with carbon offset agreements. Allegheny Wood Products, what was, it was a niche product. They were finny, they, they, they would cut the trees, turn them into lumber to sell to China. China requires a certain type of fumigation of lumber before they'll take it. And they had this, this fumigation plant uh, up there in Moorfield. And there, I think they were only uh, uh, one of the few companies in the country that were selling. China's not buying much timber these days. So, uh, and the market in this country and elsewhere for lumber that is fumigated is almost non existent. It's only China that was doing that. So, uh, it's sort of like when China stopped buying coal for a few years, it really knocked the socks off the West Virginia coal industry. Uh, and uh, uh, so 
I think that is it, 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 it's a handy example for them to use, but it's not accurate. 60 Minutes had a story on uh, China and their economic development this past weekend, I believe it was. I think they said there were 8 million apartment units that are empty. They overbuilt. Yes. 8 yeah, million units. They're just units. not building anything now because the Chinese economy is, is basically flat on its back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, John, uh, by the way, uh, in reading the Metro News article about SBA 22, it, it looks like it's going to die before it gets anywhere because it has failed to get, uh, uh, I guess, all the way through to make it for crossover day. Is that as you say oh, it? Oh, I did not notice that. Yeah, I just presumed it was going to pass. Yeah, it, what you're saying is it didn't make it past um, um, uh, crossover day last night. It's, the last paragraph reads, the long debate and the division led by Majority Leader Tom Tecubo, uh to call for a halt on the debate while the Senate recessed for committee meetings. Upon their return to the floor, he announced it was moved to rules where it will die for failing to meet the crossover deadline. I did not realize they had moved it to rules. I was going back and forth between the House and Senate yesterday, mm-hmm. and and you can't follow everything, sure. uh, particularly on crossover day, and also the last day of the session, things move kind of quickly. I'm very happy about that. So now I've only got one bill on this issue that I I, I need to fight. Yeah, if that if that article is accurate, then you're well, but it, yeah, it, I'm sure it is. But here's the deal. That doesn't mean the provisions of 822 can't be put into some House bill that covers the same section of the code. They'll do that. They can do that. Mm -hmm. In other words, crossover day doesn't kill an idea. It just kills a particular bill. Okay. Uh, What else are you paying attention to that has made it through? Uh, I'm going to – it's one we talked about before which has sort of made it through, but hasn't yet. Uh, and that's the, uh, uh, that uh, Women's Bill of Rights, which is really an anti-trans bill. Uh, it passed the House a, a week or so ago. It passed the Senate last night, but the Senate insisted on using its own bill number, Senate Bill 601, excuse me. So now it has to pass the House again. I have no idea why they did that. There was a great debate, and Charlie Trump put an amendment into it, uh, and uh, it was taken out on the floor. So the bill that passed is the original House version of the bill, which is different than the House version of the bill that was passed over to the Senate about a week and a half ago. So now we're going to have the debate in the House again. So, uh, again, I don't know why they did that, but uh, at least – gives us who, those of us who oppose it some faint hope that we might stop it, although I really don't think we can. John, this session has received criticism for being short on big ideas and long on small ideas. As you... I, I would... I, I think that's correct. You, you would say the same? Yes. Is that... It's been blamed on it being an election year and everybody being afraid to try to do some kind of big picture change. Do you agree with that? I do, in part. I mean, that is that is the history of the legislature. Um, the, the legislature gets more important things done in the odd-numbered year, which is the non-election year. Uh, but this is really worse, in, in my mind, than most election years I've seen. Yesterday, Delegate John Hardy was on, and he didn't spare any thoughts in saying one of the reasons why he's not running for re-election is because of the continued advance of the culture warriors, social warriors who are making their way into the Capitol as elected officials and advancing those types of bills as opposed to the bigger picture. How do we fix the economy and you know, improve education and uh, make it so that there are fewer poor people in West Virginia? Do you agree with that? Are you seeing more of that yourself? I absolutely agree with, it, with that. And, and the thing about John Hardy and me is, while he and I might disagree on some questions of how to improve the economy, we both agree that that should be the goal. Not, not, uh, oh, and there's another bill, thank you for mentioning that, another bill uh, which the uh, Senate passed, which is coming to the House, and that is the Baby Olivia bill. Yes. Uh, It's about a video to be shown in schools, and Baby Olivia is a zygote. 
Uh, and this film, it comes from an organization that is, uh, that, that is uh, publicly pro-life. They say that life begins at conception. And while they don't use that phrase in the video, there's a point where uh, the, 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 uh, where there, and the film actually says a light goes off inside your body, and that's where life begins. Uh, and uh, what they want is that to be required showing in our schools in the eighth grade and the tenth grade. And uh, my, I have been trying to fight it, and I, I, I think that any, any such instructional material put out by an ideological point of view organization to me is indoctrination. It is not education. I would say the same thing if the organization I represent, West Virginia Free, were to come out with a video with its point of view on, on when life begins and all that. I mean, that's the kind of thing I encourage parents uh, whatever their opinion to, to, to have their, their children see these things at the appropriate age, certainly. But I don't think the school system should, should take sides in the culture wars. John, can I ask a follow up question with that? So this would, that bill would require this one particular video that's available on YouTube and the internet, uh, to, to specifically yes. be shown. Is that correct? Say that again. Would it, to, that particular video to specifically be shown yes and i've seen the video not not like alternative videos or that subject matter, no. but that particular uh, that video. was one amendment okay. that charlie trump tried to put in in the senate said this or or a similar video of a similar length anticipating that other organizations might come up with with uh, uh such videos but the uh, senate rejected that they insist it's this video sponsored by this company so, and I, I just think that – now, I do think there's a constitutional question there, uh, combination in restraint of trade. Uh, if you say uh, a video produced by this organization and only that video. Well, and Matt, I, you're a lawyer. I don't know whether I'm on firm I'm not that kind of lawyer. Not, but Charlie Trump <laughs> yeah. seems to think there might be a – Well, a I think that that would, that would increase the – the view counts on YouTube for that particular video, and which would increase the revenue for that video. So, I mean, there, I haven't looked at it like that, but but it, isn't the fail safe for that? If you're opposed to that bill, that the that the school bo- the state school board can just say we're not going to do that. Uh, not according to the law, they would not be able to do that. According to this bill, my understanding in reading but, that too is that there was not an opt out provided for parents. Did so that you, is correct. Correct. They tried to. Uh, I think in the House they tried to get that in, uh, but they couldn't get it in. So, John, you said you you've seen this uh, this video. Is it an indoctrination video? If if it came from someplace else, you know, if it, if it didn't have the the fingerprint of of the organization that, that where it came from, does it feel indoctrinaire at at the time? Is it really just about sperms finding eggs and then a fetus with fingers and toes and uh, n- no, John. There's too much. There, there, there's a narrator, and there's too much from the narrator that suggests the point of view. And the point of view is essentially that life begins at conception. Okay. It does not use that term, but that's. And again, that's my. Uh, uh, that, that's me, John Gilstrap. Uh, it, it's uh, you know, you, you, I am pro-choice. So to me, that it, that appears to be indoctrination. But this goes back to my point: if a if a video were produced by West Virginia Free, uh, someone who is pro-life w- might very well consider that to be indoctrination. See, I think this would be having not seen the video. Although I feel like I watched this video when I was in high school. Um, it seems to me that the, if it were the a video of an aborted fetus, right? I mean, that would okay. I got it. That's 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 probably a step too far, and that is indoctrinaire. But if if it's really just biology with with a narrator, I guess I, I don't see. And having not seen the video, right? So I, I just it seems to me that yeah, that would, I, I that would be suitable for a biology video. Biology, you, class. Yeah, John, you might still have the same point of view. Mm-hmm. I acknowledge that possibility, 
but I, I still think you ought to see it before you make your final decision. And like I say again, West Virginia Free might come up with a video that 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 to me is well. This is just a hey. This is absolutely accurate. Well, I think but what you helped... might look at it and say, no, no, no. This is indoctrination. Well, I think what helped makes your point, John, is the fact that it has to be this one particular video and nothing else. Yeah. Which raises the question, if you then allow one organization in the school to put forth a video, which, John, you say is basically a leading you know, video. It's not a scientific or biological video so much as it is a propaganda video. Do you then have to allow another organization in with a counter video because you allowed the first one in? I'm thinking maybe it's funny. Yesterday, when I'm trying to lobby to, to get sen- uh, senators to vote against it, one senator said to me, well, John, you tell your client, West Virginia Free, to produce a video. Come back here next year, and we'll put that on the list along with this one. <laughs> and is, is uh, this, I, don't, I don't think that was I just, serious. I just don't think that's the way to run a government. <laughs> is this fundamentally different than what we do for textbooks? I mean, we, we, I presume that there are approved texts for history and English. You have to teach this, this, and this, and these are the approved texts to do that. Is this fundamentally different? I think it is, yes. Hey, John, before you go, the question I have for you in regards to West Virginia Free is the state had talked about further tightening of abortion restrictions as we've gotten to crossover days. Is there a bill that we'll get through that does that? Uh I think there is one Senate bill. Uh, Senator Rucker sponsored it. She says it does not tighten restrictions. I think it does uh, in in a fairly minor way. Uh, What it does is for the exceptions for rape and incest. Uh, She has tightened uh, both the time frame and uh, the uh, uh, the number of doctor visits you have to have. I think it's it it's just made the burden a little bit more onerous and and I'm not I don't have the bill in front of me now so I don't uh, I can't cite anything specific but I remember when it passed the Senate I think it passed last week um the I uh, I remember her saying this this is not more restrictive but it clearly does add some steps that someone has to go through to get an exception for rape or incest we got a minute left. John, final word is yours. Anything else we need to know about that we haven't talked about? Uh, only that uh, uh, Beto O'Rourke is coming to Shepherdstown uh, this weekend, and uh, I probably won't be able to get up there and see him because uh, I'm guessing that we're going to be meeting on, on Saturday again. I, I stayed down last weekend because the Senate was in till about 2.30 Saturday afternoon. So uh, uh, that's uh, – I. I uh, I mean, hey, maybe they'll do me a favor and decide not to meet on Saturday, but I don't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> John, you have yourself a great day. You all, too. Thank you Take very care. much.